<laughs> what the hell is in this crap? Neon City, 1991, directed by Monty Markham, starring Michael Ironside, Vanity, and Lyle Elzado. In a bleak future filled with mutants and raiders, a group of people must travel across the irradiated wasteland in a large armored vehicle. This film is part of a subgenre that I've been itching to feature on my channel, the Mad Max clone. George Miller's 1981 sequel proved highly influential, and multiple films featuring leather-clad warriors with rusted vehicles popped up throughout the 80s and early 90s. The biggest surprise is the quality of the script, which is usually the most forgettable part of a Mad Max clone. The main cast is populated entirely with memorable characters. From a hardened bounty hunter, and an aspiring stand-up comedian, to a doctor who's not what he seems, and a stuffy elitist. Michael Ironside's character is given an actual character arc as well, which is a pleasant surprise from a Mad Max clone. Michael Ironside also has the world's most appropriate name for a lead actor in a Mad Max clone. Fans of The Office will be shocked to see Creed Bratton making a cameo as a guard at the titular Neon City. Research revealed that the screenplay was written by Anne Lewis Hamilton, a television producer and writer who worked on a number of primetime dramas throughout the 90s and 2000s, including Providence, One Tree Hill, Party of Five, and Grey's Anatomy. She used a male pseudonym to sell the script, as she dealt with sexism in the past, and unfortunately this film serves as her sole foray into science fiction at this time. The production design in this film is pretty impressive with the world-building accomplished through the costumes in various locations offering more than what many lesser Mad Max clones provide. This film boasts fairly little as far as post-apocalyptic battle vehicles are concerned, but makes up for this by largely taking place in a formidable armored transport which almost becomes a character of its own. Sadly, this is Lyle Elzato's final role. He'd die of a brain tumor a year after this film's release. Verdict recommended an entry in a genre of copycats that manages to stand out. That concludes this week's review. If there's any obscure sci-fi horror film you'd like to suggest, feel free to leave a comment below. Make sure to tune in next time for another thrilling low-budget adventure.